Ganun talaga minsan, may blunders. <laughs> so even when you read the Word of God, sometimes, you know, there are mistakes. So, um, sabi nga nila, no one is perfect, di ba? Kaya, it's normal that we commit mistakes from time to time. So, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. So, I think you already knew what is my, ano yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon. And it's very relevant for us, especially those who claim that they are being seen. Di ba? So, time and time again, every time na uh, tatayo ako dito, there's always, you know, my number one critics. You know, my number one critics is myself. See, this is my number one critics. Every time I will stand up here or every time I will be in charge, the number one critics is myself. You know, there are boys within you. There are boys within you that telling you, why you will preach? Why, you're, why you will preach the word of God? You are not perfect and you have a lot of flaws. Diba? Marami kang ano, marami kang mali. Diba? Sabi nga nila pag, ano, diba? Um, pag nagbabago ka, ang unang, ang unang tumitilig sa sa'yo, yung mga taong nakakakilala, diba? Oh, hindi yung totoo, diba? Peke yan. Diba? So, normally, every time I Every time I stand up here, so I always criticize myself. Na, why me? So, the true prayers, I always pray na, uh, I know I am not worthy, but at the same time, you have called me. So, regardless of that, I know you have a reason. Diba? God has a reason why they called you. To stand up here sometimes, or sometimes you sing, you worship God. So, there are always still, you know, those small boys talking to you that you are not worthy. You know, it always reminds you that you are not worthy. But if you knew the word of God, you just rely on His grace. Diba? Yan yung pangontra mo eh, diba? I've been saved through the grace of God. I knew, di ba? You knew that you are not worthy. But at the same time, we understood that Jesus Christ died for us. Di ba? Kaya nga dumating si Jesus Christ dito eh, kasi we are not all worthy. And we can never be worthy at all. Di ba? The only reason that we are worthy is because of Him. Not because of anyone else. So again, pag merong pumasok sa inyo na small boys criticizing yourselves, you always point to the Bible. You always look at Jesus Christ. Kasi in that way, you can move on and continue the race. Amen? Amen. So with that background, pag-uusapan natin ngayon is about integrity. The integrity is, simula bata ka yan eh. Simula bata ka, nahubog yan hanggang paglaki mo. Diba? Sabi nga nila, pag may nakita kang bakod, kung nung alisin ang bakod, isipin mo kung bakit nilagay yung bakod na yan. You always put pens, diba? Why? Sa bahay, diba? To protect your house, to protect your property. And at the same time, sa sarili natin, we should have pens. Meron din tayong pens. You know, yun yung ano, pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Yung integrity. Pero bago, da, bago yun, punta muna tayo sa election kasi kanina. <laughs> na, naririnig ko, hindi makamove on yung ano eh. <laughs> yung mga iba. So, let's go to the election. Di ba, ang nanalo si ano? Ananalo si Duterte, tapos alo kami sa, vice pre sa president, panalo kami sa vice president. 
Say bu moto ko. Moto ko and I, I encourage every one of you. Next time, mag-register kayo, bumoto kayo. It's one of our privileges, actually. As a Filipino citizen, to choose kung ano yung gusto nating leader. Sabi nga nila, pag hindi ka rin bumoto, wala ang karapatang magreklamo. Kasi binigyan ka ng pagkakataon na pumili ng leader, hindi ka bumoto, hindi ka, bumoto, hindi ka pumili. So, huwag ka na magreklamo. <laughs> Ganun na lang, di ba? So, going back to election. Manalo na si Duterte, manalo si ano, Robredo. Di ba? You know what happened during that time? Di ba? Uh, sabi nila, they claim, so wala namang ba, anti-bias to, they claim cheated. They got cheated, di ba? So what they are saying is, they got cheated because the integrity of the data. Alam niyo, minanipulate yung data. Di ba? So I explain to sa inyo, paano, paano ba mamamanipulate yung data? Kasi yung terms na ginagamit nila is more on ano eh, technology, di ba? Sa technology. So, let me try to explain on layman terms. Sa layman terms. Di ba pag sumulat ka, alimbawa, nilagay, nilagay mo, I love you, tapos check. Let's say to my wife, di ba? Kasi ang ibig sabihin ng integrity of data, you are protecting this data. When you say, I love you, and send it back, doon sa asawa mo, let's say, by email or by what, by, by a messenger or by WhatsApp, bago nila isend yan, i-scramble nila yan. Yung I love you check. So maybe yung E mo, una sa una, maybe yung E, gagawin nilang, ano, gagawin nilang number three. Ganun yun, para hindi makuha ng mga hacker. So in case na mag nila yung data, hindi nila mababasa, di ba? Eh ngayon, nung pag-send ko doon, ang nabasa niya ngayon, hindi che. Di ba? <laughs> hindi che. Ang nabasa niya, ibang pangalan na. Ibang pangalan na, hindi na che. Let's say, I love you, she na. Di ba? S-H-E na. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin nun, somewhere in the air or somewhere in the network, nag-grab yung data, yung C, ginawang S. So ngayon, nung dinecode siya doon, nung dinecode siya doon, nung, nung receiver, S na yung lumabas. Diba? So paano mo ngayon mapapatunayan na yung data na yun is tama doon sa pinadala ng ano, ng sender? How you can prove? Siyempre, babalik ka doon sa sender, di ba? Kasi yun na sinulat niya eh. C-H-E, di ba? Hindi naman S-H-E. So yung data na yun, i-reverse -re engineer nila yun. Yung S-H-E, i-reverse -re engineering nila yun. At pag ni-reverse -re engineer nila yun, at lumabas talaga yung S, ibig sabihin, binago talaga. Binago talaga yung data. Doon sa source. Okay, now go back to the election. Sinabi, binago yung number. Diba? Or your integrity of data. Pero sabi nung ano, question mark lang. Diba? Yung question mark, binago nila ginawa nilang NA. So, if you are really into, into technology, once I am start transmitting the data, let's say Osmeña, ang vote niya is 100, ang nilagay ko ngayon is 200. Diba? Let's say 100, nung pag-transfer doon, inak siya, ginawa 200. Diba? So ngayon, babalik doon, titignan ngayon, bakit 200? So i-reverse -re engineer nila, hindi 100 lang dito, mali ngayon. Hindi parehas. So ang mangyayari ngayon, sabi, so somewhere in the middle, they hack it. But when you go back to the source, 100 pa rin siya. So ibig sabihin, imposible kasi yun eh. Imposible mong mahack yung isang data. You have the integrity, you have the encryption, and you have the authentication. Yung authentication kasi yun yung username and password. Let's say they got the username and password. They were able to get the data. When they try to reverse engineer that, hindi pa rin kasi encrypted siya. 
So there are three things. You have encryption, you have authentication, and you have this hashing, yung integrity. So they are calling this integrity, kaya binaboycott nila. Sabi nila, no, the integrity of the data was compromised. Sabi nila, it was compromised, so kailangan i-recount natin. So, ewan natin, we don't know, if, uh, we don't know what will happen, but, you know, let's move on to the election. <laughs> Tapos na yun, di ba? It's all gone. So, let the officials handle that. Now we will talk about our own integrity. Yung integrity natin. It's about the truth about yourself. See, the truth about yourself, ano ba yung katotohanan sa sarili mo? That every time when you look in front of the mirror, what do you see in yourself? Diba? Are you living in a lie? Alam nyo, merong isang ano, merong isang Israeli, way, way back, I think that was matagal na. He, they thought, he thought, actually, he thought that the most powerful weapon in the world is the nuclear bomb. Sabi niya, ito ang pinaka, ano, this is the most powerful weapon in the world. Because they saw it, di ba? The Americans use it in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, di ba? The most powerful weapon in the world is the nuclear bomb. So he is starting to acquire it and give it to his people. So kinuha niya to, dinala niya sa bansa niya. Say he wants to be his country to be the one of the most powerful in the world. But later on, nung nalaman niya, nung, alam niyo yun, later on in his life, he regrets, actually. And, his, and he found out that the most powerful weapon in the world is the truth. Ang pinakamakapangyarihan pala sa buong mundo ay yung katotokanan. The truth. And the Bible speaks the truth. Diba? There is no single lies. Walang isang kasinungalingan na nakasulat sa Biblia. And that is the most powerful in the world. The truth of which is the word of God. So every time you got confused, you always look for the truth. And you can only find it in the Word of God. Because God will never lie. Amen? Hindi siya magsisinungaling. Hindi, hindi siya magsisinungaling para lang ano, maging okay ka. He is always speaking the truth. Now, what about the truth in yourself? The truth in myself. How do you see your integrity? How do you see your character? Sa so, tingin nyo ba, pag nag-worship kayo ng ano, ng every time you worship, tapos hindi naman pala totoo, do you think God will be pleased? So, God doesn't care. You know, if, you, if you are not a genuine worshiper, then He will not be pleased. See, the truth about yourself, this is, the, this is our topic. The truth about yourself. Check about yourself. What is the truth inside of you? Think about this. Are you really a Christian? Did you really think that you are saved? Ito yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon. If you think you are saved, then let's analyze the truth about ourselves. See, elevating our life standards. See, if we claim, if we are claiming that we are saved, kailangan elevate natin yung standard natin. Diba? The, the, the thing that you knew that you are saved, kailangan alam mo na kung ano yung tama at ano yung mali. Diba? You don't compromise. 
Diba? We cannot compromise ourselves, especially when we knew that this is wrong. What you say you believe doesn't necessarily dictate how you live. See, what you say you believe doesn't necessarily dictate how you live. What does it mean? Anong ibig sabihin nun? Salita ka ng salita dito, pero pag, paglabas mo ng simbahan, ano ka pa rin? Problema ka pa rin sa, ano, sa trabaho? Sinusumpa mo yung amo mo? You curse your boss? Where's the integrity? And then you claim you're a Christian, tapos inasa, inaaya mo yung, ano, yung kasama mo na mag-church. Karasis, church style. Doon tayo sa, ano, sabihin ng kasama mo, ay, nako, ayaw kong maging kaugali mo. Ano yung sabi ni Jesus Christ? Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Ayan yung sabi ni Jesus Christ. So, Jesus Christ is telling us, di ba? Beware practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So, kung laging pakitang tao ka lang, mahirap yun, di ba? Then, I don't expect, you know, when you are inside the church, na ano ka? Yung awal dito. <laughs> Nung sasalita ka ng masama, because, uh, it's normal, you know. It's normal when you are inside the church. Ano ka eh, pino ka, di ba? Lagi kang ano, praise God, ganito, ganyan, ganito, ganyan. But the reality is when you are outside the church. That is where your integrity start. Dito hindi natin makikita, di ba? Hindi natin makikita dito, we are all in the same page, we are talking the same thing. Pero pag nasa labas na tayo, and that is the reality. Ngayon, ito yung pag-uusapan natin. The power of integrity. See, the power of integrity. So what can believers do to combat hypocrisy and cultivate integrity? Diba sinasabi ng iba ng mga non-believers, No, you are hypocrite. You are saying the words of God, but you are not the doer. I do not see it in your lives. Diba? You are trying to talk to someone, Ah, hindi, kilala ko yung ano mo dyan. Ganito yan, ganyan, ganyan. So what can believers do to combat hypocrisy and cultivate integrity? Ano yung kailangan natin gawin? You have any idea? So through the pen of the Apostle Paul, God, God gave us instructions on how to guard ourselves and the church from becoming a spiritual bogus. Diba? Ano yung kailangan natin gawin? We go back to the scripture. Diba? The scripture will always tell us the answer. The scripture will always guide us. Ayun ang sabi ni Paul, diba? So what can believers do to combat hypocrisy and cultivate integrity? Ang sabi niya sa Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. Ito raw ang gawin natin. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, diba? Eh, sabi ni Paul, oh, alam niya, lagi silang sumusunod yung Philippians. See you, Paul. Therefore, my beloved, you, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. 
Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, ibig sabihin nung work out your own salvation, hindi yan yung pagtatrabahohan mo yung para masave ka. Okay? There's another meaning for that. Hindi yan yung pag-usapan natin yan mamaya. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Chapter, uh, verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. This is for the believers. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so if you are really a believer of God, if you are really a follower of Christ, you are always obeying. Ito nga sinasabi niya, always obeyed. So now that only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. So sinasabi niya, pag wala ako, kahit wala ako dyan, sumunod kayo. Diba? Kahit wala ako dyan, sumunod kayo. He is talking about integrity. So work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. Let's pray, Heavenly Father, Panginoon, Ikaw yung manguna sa amin. Panginoon, guide us, O Lord. Habang pinag-uusapan namin ito, Panginoon, Ikaw yung masunod, Panginoon. May your words speak to my mouth, Panginoon. Anoint your sermon, Panginoon. Anoint the hearer, Panginoon. Na maunawaan nila yung sinasabi mo, Panginoon. It's all about you. You are the vine, O Lord. And we are just the branches, Panginoon. Whatever fruit we have, Panginoon, it's coming from you, Panginoon. If we claim that we are really a Christian, Panginoon, and our bind is in you, Panginoon, and we are just branches, Panginoon, let the fruits of this salvation manifest us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, two things lang, pag-aaralan natin ngayon. So, according to Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 13, number one, on how you are cultivating your integrity is what? It's inside your heart. Deciding what is right. So therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. Ano ba ibig sabihin nun? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For example, consider the Apostle Paul's charge to believers in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Ano yung ibig sabihin? Diba? Deciding what is right. It's a charge to work out the spiritual truth the Lord has already worked into us through salvation. See, the moment you are saved, we are saved, right? And the Holy Spirit is within us. So, work out. Sabi dito, work, put simply, it's a charge to work out the spiritual truth to the Lord. Has already worked into us through salvation. See, when, when God saved us, He never leaves us. Diba? He never leave us. The moment you are saved, sitingin mo ba pag na-save ka, sabihin ng Panginoon, bahala ka sa buhay mo. Sabihin, ng, uh, sabihin ni God, okay, you are saved. Bahala ka na sa buhay mo. Kaya mo na yan. No. The moment you are saved, the moment you are saved, the Holy Spirit is within you. And that is the reason why he's saying, work out your own salvation. This is the fruit. Work out the fruit of your salvation. So, kapag nasave ka na, dapat may makikita ang pagbabago sa'yo. Diba? Kung dati nagmumura ka, araw-araw, ngayon, once a week na lang. Diba? You have to work out because when you say the words, 
that you get used to it and before before you are saved it's normal and now that you are saved there is small voice telling you this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong change it change it diba baguhin mo yan kapatid baguhin mo yan why because the voice of god is telling you to work out your salvation it's the proof actually iyon yung bunga pinagtatrabahohan mo yan pero hindi lang ikaw ang naandiyan because the moment you are saved god is working in you the moment you accepted jesus christ in your life you are no longer deciding what is wrong you already knew the boundary that this is wrong and this is right diba na kailangan kailangan ko nang ilagay yung friends ko dito if these friends of mine are compromising me then i have to stay away from him diba if these people are compromising me kailangan umalis na ako dito diba and that's how you put the fence because the spirit of god is also working in you now and you have this voice always telling you my son this is wrong you always have desire what is right lagi mong titingnan yung tama lagi mong gagawin yung tama and that is where your boundaries start diba doon na rin mag-uumpisa yung totoong integrity sa sarili mo. You see, um, integrity is sometimes sa mga tao, di ba, nakikita nila. You are hypocrite. You don't care what other people say. What you care is what God will say. Are you really for real? And sometimes people will try to pull you down, but you, have, you don't have to discourage yourself. You always look in God and check what he can see in you. So that is where we build the fence through the word of God. Through his Holy Spirit, he is protecting us. So true integrity starts where? It starts on the inside. Nag-uumpisa yan sa loob. Diba? When we are saved, it is start to cultivate the inside. It start to cultivate what is inside ourselves ano ba yung meron tayo diba the thing is when we are saved something new has come diba sabi ni Paul it replaces the old one and something new has come to your lives diba may bago nang dumating sa buhay natin and that is the holy spirit diba the holy spirit is always convicting us to do what is right It will never depart us. Kung sa tingin mo magkakamali ka, the Holy Spirit will always still tell you. And God has its way to remind you na mali yan. To don't do that. So true integrity starts from the inside. With your desire, with your inclination, and with your intention. These three, with your desire. What do you desire now? Kung dati gusto mo, linggo-linggo umiinom ka. Diba? Kung dati gusto mo, every week may gimmick ka. Diba? Kung dati, every week nag-aaway kayo ng asawa mo. Kasi lagi kang lasing, umuwi. Diba? Your desire is starting to change. Diba? Diba? See, if your will is not aligned with God, it doesn't matter how you act. If your will is not aligned with God, it doesn't matter how you act. See, the believer's life is in a state of constant war with himself. The temptation of sin and ease of compromise will always be present tugging at his flesh, on our flesh. The temptation of sin and the ease of compromise will always be present tugging at his flesh. 
Combating those old inclinations is the new nature the Lord has created within. And the longer the believer gains victory over his former sin through his new nature in Christ, the more he builds track record of integrity. Intindihan nyo? Every time, every time you overcome one single sin in your life, it builds the track of integrity. See? And the longer the believer gains victory over the former sin through his new nature in Christ, the more he builds track record of integrity. But every time we overcome those old habits that we have it started to build this track of integrity. Now, what is the desire of your heart? And what is the desire of your life? This is the question. Right? Again, it starts in the inside. If your desire is not in the will of God, then again, you have to check. Balikan natin. Balikan mo. Ano ba talaga ang gusto ko? It is really the desire of God. And again, check yourself. Check what is the real you. Check about the truth in yourselves. The result of those inward motivation ought to show up in how we act. Kailangan makikita yan. Di ba? Kailangan nagbabago ka. And that's how we build our integrity. Kung dati wala kang hindi ka kapaniwala, Ngayon, unti-unti nang naniniwala ang mga nakakalala sa iyo. Why? Because they see the radical change. They see it in their own eyes. Makikita nila. Di ba? And that is how God working us. The moment that we are saying, God will never leave you. He will always strengthen you. And He will always guide you. Regardless kung ano man yung dadaan mo. So, check your life. Mga kapatid, are you living in compromise now? Did you compromise something about yourself? Na okay lang? Hindi naman nila alam? So maybe there are still small boys talking to you. You can change. Kapatid, kaya mong baguhin yan. It's only through the grace of God that you can change that. You can overcome that because God is the most powerful. His truth is the most powerful. Go to His Word and you will see one step at the time yung integrity mong makikita. See, and sabi ni, ano, Dian Modi, if I take care of my character, my reputation will take care of itself. You don't care about your reputation. Di ba? As long as you take care of your character, your re reputation will take care of itself. Ayan ang sabi ni Dian Modi. So again, mga, mga kapatid, let's check the inside of us. What is really within us? What are the things that we got compromised? Right now, in this very moment, give it all to God. And I knew He will correct that. Because one step at a time, He will help us to overcome all those sins that we still have. Because hindi naman, impossible naman na mawala lahat, di ba? Impossible mawala lahat ng clothes natin. Then we make God a liar, di ba? If we say that, no, I don't have clothes. Wala akong mali. Di ba? No. So God is working in you the moment that you are saved through His Holy Spirit. And start with the inside. It always starts within you, inside you. Hindi yan magbabago. Hindi yan magsisimula doon sa kung sinong tao kasama mo o inuindol mo. Mag-uumpisa yan sa iyo 
with the help of God. Number two. Number one, deciding what is right. And number two, working out what is right. So start in the inside. Now you have to work out what is right. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. And when you are working, when you are building your integrity, when you are building your integrity, God is working in you. It is God. It is not you only. It is God working inside of you and building your integrity. So for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. See, God living is our responsibility but it's, but it's one we cannot fulfill through our own strength alone. The Holy Spirit must be at work in us if we're going to achieve and believe that we are living with integrity. You want to achieve this integrity. The Holy Spirit must be work in us. The Holy Spirit will continue to mold us until we meet the Lord. It's the Spirit who brings to life our good works. The Lord can work effectively only through lives that are disciplined and submitted to Him. You submit yourself to God. And the Lord can work effectively to you. But, pero kung sway-sway lang, kung konti-konti lang, pag-feel mo lang, Lord, I submit now. Kasi, ano, dami kong pera. <laughs> blessings. Di ba? <laughs> Di ba? May blessings, Lord. I submit myself to you. Amen. Praise you. Ganun ba yun? Di ba? Hindi ganun. So one of the defining moments in our lives is, you know, when we pass through all the storms, when you look at back, sabihin mo, that's how it made me today. Diba? Kaya ka nakatayo ngayon because all those storms in your life na pinagdaanan mo, dito ko ngayon, facing other people, believing in God, and it did help you. Diba? So this, it's the Spirit who brings to life our good works. The Lord can work effectively only through lives that are disciplined and submitted to Him. See, the integrity manifests on the outside. True integrity manifests on the outside. First is what? Should coming from the inside. Diba? Then kung ano yung nasa loob mo, yun yung dapat lumabas sa'yo. Possibly naman na... <laughs> <laughs> na puro hinanakit na yung nasa loob mo eh, pinupuri mo pa yung kaibigan mo, yung pala, puro hinanakit na so ibig sabihin nun, ano ka di ba, plastic <laughs> di ba, so true integrity also manifests on the outside and that is the fruit of the spirit you can be saved but at the same time, once you are saved, God is working in you. And when God is working in you, when God is in the business of working in you, it should manifest on the outside. So, non-believers will see your changes with your words. Paano ka magsalita? Kung dati may initin ang ulo mo, ngayon, pull ka na. Kung dati lagi kang naghihinala, ngayon konti na lang. This is how you speak. Diba? With your words. The way how you speak to people. They will see the changes. It will manifest. Lalabas yun eh. Diba? If it's indeed God is working in you, if it, if it is indeed the Holy Spirit is working in you, it will come out to your words. You speak with wisdom. You speak what is right. Diba? You are against on what is wrong. 
So it starts with your words. The true integrity manifests on the outside with your words and with your works. With your works, kapatid. The true integrity should be manifest on the outside and with your works. With our works. Diba? You don't have works. Where is your integrity? Kung wala tayong works, anong gagawin natin? Wala. Diba? Sasabihin ng mga tao, hanggang salita ka lang, you are not the doer of your words. You are nothing. Diba? You are just talking. <laughs> hanggang salita lang yan, huwag yung paniwalaan yan. But if they can see what you say is what you do, then definitely people will believe in you. Oh, this is a genuine guy. He has integrity of himself. And that is the reason why people believe with the Duterte, diba? When he say he will do it, he will do it. Diba? Pag sinabi kong gagawin ko, gagawin ko yan. So the true integrity also for us Christian believers should be with our words. Everyone here, everyone here are required by God in our words. In our church. In our church, you see, ang ganda ng lugar natin. You see, diba? Ang ganda-ganda ng lugar natin. We are very comfortable. We have, you know, a big place. A lot of seats. You know, nakikita natin. But have you ever crossed your mind? Have you ever crossed your mind how the church are able to pay the finances of having this big place. I mean, have you ever crossed your mind? Paano kaya nila nababayaran yun? Diba? How, how, how we got paid? Uh, paano natin nasasettle yung finances natin? It's through our works, diba? It's through our works. Because each and every one of you pledge something. Diba? Not for the church, but for God. Diba? Because you said, diba? You said, not to our pastors, not to our elders, to God. Diba? You said, God, I will set aside something for you. Diba? I will set aside something for you. Dahil alam ko, ito yung tama. Diba? Now here is the question. Are you are you really doing those works? Diba? So let's let us start to build our words because that is where our integrity also manifests within us. And I encourage you, each and every one of you here, and the reason why we are having this place, it's not because me, Pastor Ray, or all the elders, it's because all of us, we are working hand by hand, displaying our works, not for the glory of someone, but for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that is the reason why we are still in this place, worshiping God comfortably, with a lot of seats, with a good band, with a good sounds, because God is working in each and every one of us. And the Holy Spirit is convicting you and me about our works. We have to work out our salvation, the fruit of our spirits. Because God is within us. So it's the Spirit who brings to life our good works. Diba? It's the Holy Spirit that brings life to your good works. Kung wala kang good works, check again your life. Baka wala kang Holy Spirit. The Lord can work effectively only through lives that are disciplined and submitted to Him. A 
See the incomprehensible truth of verse 13 that God is enabling us to live for Him and is pleased when we do make all the challenge and effort of working out our salvation with fear and trembling worldwide. The incomprehensible truth of verse 13 that God is enabling us to live for Him and pleased when we do makes all the challenge and effort of working out our salvation with fear and trembling worldwide. It's worthwhile, you know, to bring our works in front of God. Hindi para doon yung tao, hindi para i-praise kanila. Diba? It's because of Him only. It's because of Him. I have a little doubt that the single greatest obstacle to the impact of the gospel has not been its inability to provide answers. But the failure on our part to live it out. See, you always share the gospel. But if people can never see it from, the out, from your outside, they will never believe it. This is what Paul said, the unbelievers, the gospel for the unbelievers is what? It's a trash. Diba? It's a trash. For unbeliever, the gospel is it's a trash. Basura. Diba? And the only way people will see the gospel is through within you. If they see in your life that you are really the doer, of what you do, what you say, then definitely they will encourage that, okay, maybe he is talking. You know, maybe totoo nga ang sinasabi niya. Totoo nga ang sinasabi niya. Because you said, God changed me. Diba? When I found Jesus Christ, He changed me. And then you are starting to answer all those questions about the Gospels. Pero kung nakikita nila hindi ka nagbabago, hindi mo niniwala sa iya. They will think that the gospel is just a trash. So if you are claiming that Jesus Christ is within you, then this is, you know, we have to leave it out. Leave it out. Share the gospel and leave it out. Build your integrity build our integrity overcoming our sin one at a time and how we will build the trap of our integrity obviously all of us as Christians certainly those of us who serve the Lord publicly are called to integrity that is to live what we preach to be consistent to be one, as that word integer indicates. That's critical. I mean, that's our calling. But at the same time, none of us, none of us, can be perfect. So we're all going to, in some sense, preach a better message, proclaim a better message, believe a better message, than we can live. We all fall short. First John says if we if we say we have no sin, we make God a liar, and the truth is not in us. So look, we're all going to, at some points in time, have our integrity called into question. How do we get it back? Well, first of all, we deal with small breaches of those truths that we affirm and declare. We deal with them in small ways. Uh, starting with the thought life, starting with what we say, and starting with the small acts of life, so that we don't ever get to a point where there's some massive collapse and epic breach of our integrity. You know, whenever I see somebody's life explode, somebody in ministry, somebody who has been proclaiming the truth and, and their life uh, erupts in some scandalous fashion, I always say that wasn't the beginning of anything. That was the end of a whole lot of things. It started with tolerating breaches of integrity in the mind, in the heart, in the thought life, 
in, in the private communication, things that were said that weren't public, and tolerating sins here and there that seemed at the time to be small or maybe even marginal breaches of divine standards. But enough of that stacked together ends up in a disaster. James puts it this way, sin conceives in the heart and then ends up in death. So to maintain integrity is not to be perfect, but it is to deal with sin in the way that the Bible calls us to deal with it, and that is to repent of it, turn from it, and make it our ambition to be pleasing to God in everything we do, as well as what we say. So to retain integrity, to have our integrity, we have to always repent with our sin. And don't set aside the sin within you. God gives you the power to overcome those sins in your life. And that is how each and every one here in this room, you can build your own integrity. Not on your own, not on your own but through Him. Because He is the source of everything. Don't take my words. Take God's words. See, conclusion. Consider this glorious truth that in the Lord we've been released from the bondage of sin, redeemed from the wrath we had earned, and restored to a right relationship with the Lord. Instead of being controlled by our flesh, we have the Spirit living and working within us to break the habits of our former lives and grow us in our godliness. This is the truth. This is the glorious truth that in the Lord we've been released from the bondage of sin, redeemed from the wrath we had earned, and restored to a right relationship with the Lord. Instead of being controlled by our flesh, we have the Spirit living and working within us to break the habits of our former lives and grow us in godliness. See, living with integrity simply means living out those rich realities. You are released from your bondage of sin. You are redeemed from the wrath you have earned. And you are restored to a right relationship with the Lord. These are the three realities. You want to have integrities. If I want to have integrities, then I have always had to look on this too. Check your life. Tignan mo yung sarili mo, kapatid. Baka mamaya, those small breaches na sinasabi ni John Mankato is continuing to grow until it will explode. Pero huwag tayong mawala ng pag-asa, di ba? As long as the Holy Spirit is within us, He will always tell you that this is the right thing and this is the wrong thing. And based on that, as a Christian, you know what is right. You are deciding what is right. And you are working on what is right. Amen? Let us all build our integrity, mga because this is where the body of Christ will resonate in us. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand and pray. Heavenly Father, Panginoon, Salamat, Panginoon, sa mga sakita mo, Panginoon, na binigay mo sa amin, Panginoon, na ikaw po yung nakakalang, Panginoon, we knew, Panginoon, with our lives, ourselves, a careful analysis, Panginoon, a careful inventory with our life, with ourselves, Panginoon, our integrity will be shattered away. We knew, Panginoon, that each and every one of us here, Panginoon, from time to time, we always committed sin. Alam mo, Panginoon, yung mga kasalanan namin, Panginoon, alam mo yung mga ginagawa namin, Panginoon, Alam mo yung nakikita mo, Panginoon, yung mga, mga naiisip namin, Panginoon, yung desire namin, Panginoon, 
Ikaw yung nakakakita nito, Panginoon. And you knew, Panginoon. You knew our lives. You knew the truth about ourselves, Panginoon. We cannot hide anything to you. We don't have integrity to you, Panginoon. There is no integrity, Panginoon, in front of you. Kaya, Panginoon, hinihiling namin, Panginoon, na you continue to work in us, Panginoon. To do your will, Panginoon. To submit ourselves to you, Panginoon. Kung nagkakamali kami, Panginoon, and we fall sometimes, Panginoon, and I win you, Panginoon, that you are the working in us, correcting us, Panginoon. Time and time, Panginoon, ikaw yung laging naandyan sa amin at itatama mo kami, Panginoon, doon sa mga mali naming mga nagkagawa, Panginoon. Put your words, Panginoon, as our pens, Panginoon, as our pens in our life, Panginoon. Your words will always tell the truth, Panginoon. Even if it does hurt with us, if, even if it does hurt, Panginoon, sa ibang tao, Panginoon, still your words, it's still the truth, Panginoon. Let your truth will always prevail to each and every one of us, Panginoon. In this church, Panginoon, let your truth will always prevail, Panginoon. Panginoon, dinadalangin namin, Panginoon, ang bawat isa dito, Panginoon. Help us, O Lord. To build our integrity according to your words, according to your purpose, Panginoon. We rely on you, Panginoon. It is your grace alone, Panginoon. It is your saving power, Panginoon. Kung bakit, Panginoon, we overcome one step at a time our sins, the sins of the past, Panginoon, the old habits that we have, Panginoon. We are trying to overcome, not because of us, but because of you, Panginoon. And still in our hearts, O Lord, that someday, Panginoon, when we face you, we have the integrity to call you Lord. Not because of us, but because of your Son, Jesus Christ, Panginoon. He is our Savior, Panginoon, and you gave it to us, Panginoon. May we continue, Panginoon, to bless this place, bless our church, bless our leaders, bless these congregations, all of these people, Panginoon. Bless us, Panginoon, and may we live a life of integrity that is pleasing to you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.